What's up everybody? I guess it's been a minute, but I really haven't been watching boxing. Except for this weekend. How about that UFC card though? Usman versus Masvidal Sassoon. That was a good ass card, huh? Anyway, let's talk a little bit of boxing. Chisora Parker wasn't really scoring the fight, but it really could have gone either way in my opinion. And I say that even though I didn't count that knockdown in the, was it the first round, second round? Because Parker got hit behind the head. But I mean, if you're a judge and you're supposed to score that, I mean, it's crazy they didn't give it to Chisora, right? So it seems like the establishment would have wanted Usyk to lose to Chisora and they did everything they could to rob his ass, but then he gets in the ring with Parker and Parker is allowed to hold all night and spoil and, you know, they they robbed him on the cards, Chisora that is, right? So, I guess they wouldn't mind Parker rematching Joshua, but <laughs> they for damn sure, for damn sure, want to keep Usyk as far and away from AJ as possible. But you should have already been known that. Compare the performance Usyk had against Chisora versus Parker. And then go rewatch that Parker-AJ fight. I had Parker winning, personally. I mean, if you had AJ, that's understandable. But I thought Parker outboxed him. I mean, really, honestly, should have been a draw. No one should have been awarded a, the win in that piece of shit fight. But it is what it is, man. And what it is is that there are levels to this shit. And Usyk is just on another level to all these guys, except I would say... I would even say he's on another level, technically, to Tyson Fury. But, you know, Fury's a fucking mountain of a man, so that's that. But the rest of these guys in the division, Usyk's just on another level to all these guys. Um, all they got is, is a puncher's chance, basically. Or I think someone like... Um, damn, I wasn't supposed to be talking about all that. But I think someone like Joe Joyce could wear Usyk down, basically. Anyway, let's get back to this fight. This... And granted, I was never high on Joe Parker. And I kind of stopped watching him as of late. Because he's just boring to me and... Not that good, but from the fights that I have seen of his, um, this was probably the best version of Joseph Parker we've ever seen. The improvements are subtle, but the thing that I saw, first of all, it was a complete change of tactics. Maybe not that drastic, but um, tactically he was a different fighter, a lot more measured. Um, than in a lot of his other fights. I guess he was that against Joshua, but I thought even even more so in this fight. But the thing, the thing that was most different about him was his footwork. Now, Parker has always had good mobility, if need be, but and it showed in this fight. But what I'm talking about is his footwork, uh, the way he maintained distance, uh, the way he moved. And how he was switching directions, amongst other things. And how he was seemingly almost always ready to punch. He would, Even though he was very mobile, he, could, he showed that he can stop and drop uh, on a dime. So that's better. That in and of itself is better Joe Parker than I've ever seen. Because he has a tendency to bounce around and, or be a little bit too flat-footed. But to me, it seemed like he kind of, his footwork was just really good compared to what I've seen from him in the past. He seems to be improving. And another thing I noticed that seemed better, and maybe, look, because I haven't seen his fights as of late, maybe it's something he's been working on for a while. Maybe it's something that he's picking up uh, in a roundabout way from Kronk by way of Andy Lee. Damn, look at Andy Lee. 
That dude could have gone up to heavyweight, really, if you think about it. A little, put him on a little bit of something, something, and he could have been a heavyweight. Anyway, watch him call it. Yeah, um, the thing that he did, another another thing that he did in this fight that made me, that is making me say that this was his, the best version of himself was how he was working off his feints now. Parker is known, has been known to faint a lot and even too much sometimes. But he wasn't really wasting his feints here. He was working off, using his feints to very well and working off the feints really well. Uh, he's always had a decent jab, but he really, he seems to have improved. He's more judicious with it and, and looked pretty accurate. And all of that, despite the fact that Chisora for his part, is the best version of himself, technically, right? He's not as athletic as he was in his younger age, doesn't have the stamina, the tenacity, right? The kind of uh, energy that, that he's had in the past, and intensity, nowhere near what he used to be, but he's got better punch technique, he's added some wrinkles to his game, and he's just better technically. So... And his defense seems to have improved. So even even though he had that kind of chisora in front of him, he was still able to pick him off with the jab quite a bit. The thing I didn't like that I thought the ref should have warned him for, but again, you know, they're going to fatten up Parker for the kill and do everything they can to uh, beat Usyk up. If he is to ever fight for that title, he should have been fought couple of years ago already um, yeah basically I, I think they're fattening him up for uh, trying to build him up for a big fight against Fury or um, AJ or maybe the winner of Usyk um, Joe Joyce but the simple fact that the referee allowed him to clinch so much in this fight I mean he should have warned them seriously in the first round and already been threatening him with points deduction in the second, right? Uh, altogether way too much clinching, but that's this is what it, what it was, right? Parker fought like an American spoiler boxer type, like, like a Floyd Mayweather or Bernard Hopkins, but without the really grimy slick shit, right? Without all of that necessarily. So he would just maintain distance, throw a good jab, but not like a power jab, damaging jab, but a rhythm disrupting jab, scoring jab, jab that would set up other punches and break uh, his opponent's rhythm, uh, use it to maintain distance along with his footwork. And then as his opponent got closer to him, maybe hit him with a pot shot here and there, maybe a combination, try to avoid fighting on the inside maybe set off a combination here and there. But as soon as the opponent got close uh, and Parker wasn't throwing, it was just clinch, right? Neutralize him on the inside, basically. So maintain distance, pot shot, and then spoil. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But all in all, I think uh, Joseph Parker, whom I've never rated in the past, um, and I'm still not high on him or anything, but, you know, this this very well could have been, at least technically, his, his best performance. Um, which, you know, doesn't say all that much about the guy because he's just, he's on Chisora's level, basically, right? Still in his prime, Joe Parker is on, what's Chisora, 40 now? On 40-year-old Chisora's level, basically. <laughs> I mean, this this hypothesis is by now a fucking scientific theory, and what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, the ridicule of the golden the golden era of the heavyweight division right now, right? You have all these relics from the past era, like Chisora, uh, basically finding these guys out, right? I never really, again, I never really rated Parker, but. For those of you that did, 
maybe we could finally keep it real about the dude. He's just not that good, right? Not, like, he's a decent fighter, right? Like, you know, whatever. But just not that good, man. Not that good. Even though this was probably, arguably, the best version of himself. And don't get me wrong, Chisora is still a good test because he himself has improved. At this at this point in time, even if he is 40, he's still a pretty good test. But if, if you're a top, top dog, you know, one of the top three, top five, you're not arguably losing to the guy, you know what I mean? And again, looking at levels, look at how, forget all the hype, forget all the bullshit, right? Count the punches, be honest, score the fight, and com compare the fact that Usyk took 10 rounds off Chisora and Joe Parker arguably lost, right? You got a cruiserweight. Now, great fighter, no doubt about it, right? Undisputed cruiserweight champion. It is what it is. But you got a cruiserweight coming into this division. And, you know, the so-called golden era champion, or one of them, so-called champion, doesn't want to have anything to do with him. And if Usyk gets in the ring with Tyson Fury, that's not an easy fight for Tyson Fury either, all right? And he might just beat his ass too. But it is what it is, man. This heavyweight division is basically overrated. All right? And, yeah. Joe Parker, meh. Thanks for watching.